Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's continue that wonderful book, Mysterious Monsters Fact or Fiction. Once again, continuing with Chapter 1, Part 7, and this one having to do with the theme associated with the Chupacabra. The title of the chapter is still, The Chupacabra is No Ordinary Predator. Now in the other part, it was alluding to the fact that there's a lot of UFO encounters associated with the chupacabra this part will continue that in fact the title of this next segment is called ufo sightings so let's go ahead and let's feature this next part here and then i'll give my own thoughts and opinions on it afterward and i will love to hear what your own thoughts are still is there a correlation between the chupacabra and then a subsequent ufo sightings let's see what it says so here's what this segment next states Luminous, oval, and pyramidal-shaped UFOs have been seen in the vicinity where animals have been mutilated and found to be without blood. These have been reported in the towns of Cabo Rojo, Canovanas, Ponce, and Naranjito, distances apart. In Barrio Hato, the Rojas family observed a UFO. A horse and several goats were then found mutilated shortly after that observation. On November 18, 1995, a luminous disc some 40 feet in diameter with a row of dark windows around its center rim positioned itself over the antenna of Radio Procer, a radio station located in the town of Barranquitas in the center of Puerto Rico. Simultaneously, the station's electronic equipment went crazy. Dials just went wild. Incredibly, an obsolete piece of equipment from 1957 stored at that station turned itself on. More astonishingly was the fact that the apparatus was not plugged into any power source. This incident was discussed in the media as many residents in that area saw the UFO as it hovered over the station. Sadly, the TV, radio, and news media suppressed information on several encounters, some by residents next to the radio station. Channel 4 WPA-TV and Channel 11 Tele-11 covered the incident but failed to mention the presence of creatures during the sightings. This implies a cover-up by the media. A female witness also observed the creature in the Canovanas municipality in the early days of November. The ABE jumped or flew and entered a round luminous object over her car. The report suggests a link between the ABEs and UFOs or alien phenomenon, but we cannot discard the possibility that the ABEs can also be the product of a highly sophisticated genetic manipulations by human agencies. A Chinese-Russian scientist by the name of Dr. Sean Kanchen has produced genetic manipulations which have created new species of electronically crossed plant and animal organisms. Kanchen developed an electronic system whereby he can pick up the bioenergetic field of the DNA of living organisms and then transfer it electronically to other living organisms. By these means, he has created incredible new breeds of ducks and chickens with physical characteristics of both species, goats and rabbits, and then new breeds of plants such as corn wheat, peanut butter, peanut, at least sunflower seeds, and cucumber watermelons. These are produced by linking the genetic data of different living organisms contained in their bioenergenetic fields by means of ultra-high frequencies, biological linking. If the Russians had created this technology, then without doubt the U.S. and other powers have too. Therefore, it is quite possible that the chupacabras, or ABEs, could have been developed by humans. Puerto Rico has been the site for much experimentation by the United States on the island's population and territory for decades. Examples of this can be found on the experimentation of Talidomida and anticonceptive drugs on our women, which caused the birth of many malformed children in the 1950s. The lethal orange agent and other dioxide-based chemical agents were tested in several places on the island, as well as gamma radiation tests in our forest. Because of this, we can't exclude the possibility that someone may well have been experimenting with new and advanced genetic products in our country. The ABEs could be the result and has gone on awry. Who knows? Perhaps the creatures have escaped and then someone lost control of that situation. We obtained samples of blood allegedly from one of the creatures which was discovered after it jumped over a fence and tripped. 
This occurred at 9 p.m. on October 3, 1995 in Campo Rico in Canavanas. Two days before, a policeman shot one of the creatures in Campo Rico, which fled the site. The blood could well have been from that ABE. We proceeded to take the blood sample to a medical specialist and hopefully for DNA analysis. These tests are currently underway in the U.S., but here are the preliminary results. Sample 1. The original blood sample seemed to indicate similar characteristics to that of a human A-type blood with RH factor. Further analysis was not conclusive on this. Sample 2. Other analysis of the blood and matter associated to it in the sample showed a material content comparable to feces with detritus, E. coli bacteria, worms, and other parasites. Vegetal cellular material was also found. The content was comparable with that found in cases involving an injured animal or human with open wounds in the intestines through which a blood hemorrhage was issuing. Sample 3. The genetic analysis so far has revealed the blood is in no way compatible with human blood, nor with any other blood type belonging to any animal species known to science. The traces ratio of magnesium, phosphorus, calcium, and potassium are not compatible with those of normal human blood. They are much too high. The album gloline RG ratio was not compatible either with human blood. It was also too high. The ratios found do not allow the results of the analysis to be compatible with those of any known animal species. At present, we can't place the sample with any earthly organism. Therefore, it could well be the product of a highly sophisticated genetic manipulation, an organism alien to our own environment, or perhaps extraterrestrial. Other preliminary tests on subtypes and genetic analysis are not conclusive yet, but the results so far imply the samples originate from an unknown organism. And then the next segment, which will conclude the actual chapter, is called Disinformation and Concealment. Obviously, the alien potential would be difficult for the U.S. and Puerto Rican authorities to explain and has led to a disinformation program through which government agencies disseminate the already discredited official explanations of feral dogs, baboons, apes, and other exotic animals, or satanic cults as those capable of these actions. This has been strengthened by certain media jokers who have sensationalized and made light of the situation. In many instances, ridicule has been used as a weapon against serious witnesses. Other disinformation and debunking campaigns appeared organized through UFO groups by the U.S. intelligence services. Serious investigators have had their credibility affected, at least two groups disseminate information through the media, spreading panic as they tell of how the chupacabras, or ABEs, belong to an alien race who created the AIDS virus to destroy the human race. Another body spread fear by explaining the chupacabras belong to a voracious reptilian race of creatures, alien in origin, who have started devouring the populace. For our part, we have denounced their intent. It is clear that someone apparently related to the intelligence community and tends to start a panic, whilst at the same time someone, for reasons unknown, is trying to prevent this alarming situation from reaching the serious parts of the media in the United States. On one side, we have the bogus UFO investigation groups created by U.S. intelligence in Puerto Rico to disinform and intoxicate the media with ridiculous stories. Also, a crew from the U.S. TV show Inside Edition visited Puerto Rico to report on the Chupacabras, but it was obvious to everyone here that they were trying to ridicule one of the witnesses. Jose Soto, mayor of the town of Canovanas, had a serious argument with the producers, who also tried to ridicule him. Our organization was also subjected to silly questions. Apparently, they intend to air the show to discredit the situation and our research. This is not the first occasion this particular program has affected the credibility of our study program. Many still remember the important UFO sightings in Fife County, Alabama, 1990. The television program grossly ridiculed the witnesses and case files. This should alert investigators in the U.S., the events in Puerto Rico may provide good enough reasons for discussion, and it is too important to be kept hidden from the public. Then that's it. That go ahead. That ends that chapter associated with the Chupacabras. In fact, a little tease for the next part. The next part will be a new chapter, but this one 
will involve live pterodactyls, or at least some of the animals that I featured that in the past that look similar to pterodactyls. So I can't wait to talk about that soon. But let's finish this segment here. Obviously, this chapter once again ended things with the link associated with chupacabras and UFOs. It was interesting that there was some good examples associated with luminous disks and then other type of triangular or some other type of pyramidal shaped UFOs that were seen around areas. And then lo and behold, the chupacabras were seen afterward. It was pretty neat too, how that luminous disc item, whatever that was, that was 40 feet in diameter, apparently made a radio station go bonkers when it came to its equipment. And it turned on an equipment from 1957 that didn't have its power source plugged in. So what in the world was happening there, right? But it was also interesting to see that the chapter highlights the subsequent scrutiny that people have afterward when they report these things. It's kind of like a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. If you do report this stuff to anyone, people will then clearly start looking at you funny. Like the chapter highlighted how certain channels of television were covering the incident, but at the same time, they weren't highlighting certain things that the residents were mentioning. Like it was almost like a cover up, whether it was to protect their information or to stop them from, I guess, looking as ridiculous as the channel thought they were. And then that way they could make sure that that, that what was presented was as newsworthy as possible. Then you had the other situation involving some of the other samples, like uh, Inside Edition, as a chapter highlighted later on, how they in turn did a feature there in that location. I think it was Caravanas, but then they in turn were ridiculing the person they were interviewing and they were in turn trying to make fun of or do something associated with the mayor. In fact, that mayor had that argument with them because he felt that they in turn were trying to mock him or do something else as a joke, thinking that this was not something that uh, should be taken seriously. When obviously from their perspective, their scary encounters, the UFOs that they see, the creatures that they see hopping into the UFOs, and then the animals that are subsequently mutilated, all of that was real to them. That was absolutely something that was impacting them. They wanted to share their story. And then when that happened, they're getting ridiculed. So it's bad news or good news, bad news. They're sharing it, but they're getting criticized. So it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. So, But let me know what you guys think. Is there still a link involving UFOs and chupacabras? All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.